you are celebrating my company. And the seven years imprisonment, seven million naira, or how many years imprisonment? That three. Three years. Mm -hmm. So why must you go? Because you're a pregnant woman. In prison yard, there is a space where you can keep child. There's nothing more that there is uh, where they uh, not smart that yeah. So if you think you can come and uh, 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 bully me to drop my case, I'm not dropping it to I rather die. Die than to allow somebody to tarnish my image. I I work 40 years to go. <laughs> It's not the type of life I want. <laughs> I'm just, I just said my truth. So hello guys. What's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, your girl, Barista Neze, and this is Nezeville. On the 17th of September, 2023, 39-year-old Choma Okoli stepped out of her home to a nearby store to purchase some tomato puree, popularly known as tin tomatoes in Nigeria. Her preferred brand was out of stock, and so she decided to make an off-the-counter purchase. She picked a brand called Najiko Tomatoes. Najiko Tomatoes is one of the products from a company called Erisco Foods Nigeria Limited, a company which was founded and chaired by one Chief Eric Umofia. So Choma made her buy and headed home to prepare a pot of Nigeria stew for herself, her husband and her three children. Maybe the baby in her womb wanted a taste as well. Oh yes, Chioma is pregnant, expecting her fourth child. And so she got home, and being a first time user of that product, she was nudged by her curiosity to have a taste of it before she begins using it to cook. When she tasted it, she felt, according to her own assessment, that the tomato tasted a little bit more sugary than usual. So when I opened the Nagiko tomato mix, I tasted it. The sugar content was much. And then she thought to herself, maybe I can share my experience on social media. She took to her Facebook page to write this. I went to buy tin tomatoes yesterday that I will use to make stew. I did not see Gino and Sonia, so I decided to buy this one. When I opened it, I decided to taste it. Or more, sugar is just too much. Ha! Biko let me know if you have used these tin tomatoes before because this is an Ikeguru situation. Did you complete enough that no? Son, no? How do you know the product is killing? She said, I bought it and tested it. Is her mother's uh, laboratory? We're going to be giving our opinions very much in this video. Step by step, as the story unpacks, please drop your opinions down in the comment section on every part of this video. Starting from this review, what do you think about this review? I will eventually give my own opinion and I would also tell you guys what the law says. But at this point, what do you think about this singular review as it stands that Chioma made about this tin tomatoes? So let's proceed. So this debate about these tin tomatoes continued in the comment section. A commenter on that post that Chioma made wrote this. That person wrote, tagging her, Chioma Egodi Jr. I think this is her maiden name. She still goes by Egodi Jr on Facebook, but officially she is Choma Okoli. I think that's her marital name. So this person tagged her and said, stop spoiling my brother's product. If you do not like it, use another one, then bring it on social media or call the customer service, Erisco Foods Limited. Some people advise her, please release, remove that in response to this business. He said, no, it doesn't matter. If you, if you are doing product review, allow people to say their view. Nobody allowed. If you support our product, say you are using the product for years, she will insult you. Only when you support, she says that the risk is not good, she will tell you you are doing well. And Choma fired back. She said, I do not use sugar. We use honey. But let it though. I have moved past this, okay? And please do the same. 
she then went ahead to say help me advise and listen to this part very intensely because it is my opinion that the first post standing alone may not have snowballed to this whole brouhaha that we have on our hands right now i am of the strong opinion that the crux of this whole issue emanated from this second response so in response to that person urging choma not to spoil his or her brother's business choma responded help me advise your brother to stop killing people with his products yesterday was my first time of using and it is pure sugar Twa this my dear brothers and sisters i believe triggered the chain of reaction that has now led to this pandemonium again what do you think about this second comment that choma made about the product of a risco nigeria limited killing people begin to drop down in the comment section if his product review as you people assumed she have posted it and allowed people to review the product but where she said by herself that her product is killing people and where she said that the other one that said can we now spoil the product her, her colleagues she now said done already but before we proceed with this story very importantly i think it's a good time to remind you that our master course is still on and running so if you are a content creator or you are desiring to be one or you just have this flair for storytelling and you want to sharpen your oratory skills i have put together a beautiful five module gem-packed program titled mastering the art of storytelling if you have been watching me for a long time you will attest that my storytelling skills have very much improved and that improvement is reflecting on my overall output it is not by chance it is an art that i have studied and i have sharpened and it will be great injustice not to share my knowledge with those that are desirous of having it so if you want to learn how to take your youtube and creation game to the next level do send an email interested to nezemasterclass at gmail.com i'll see you in class so on the 23rd of september six days after choma did this tomato review on facebook she was attending a church program at the ogudu area of lagos when she was accosted arrested and whisked away by plain clothed officers of the Nigerian police force. She was taken straight to a police station there in Lagos for questioning. After a session of questioning, and she was asked to write her official statement at the police station, perhaps thinking that it was one of these little disturbances, her husband asked the police officer in charge, the IPO, if they were free to go. Oh, they have questioned her, she has written a statement, can she leave now? But the police declined answering that they were waiting for a call from above. After the call from above came, the instruction that that call came with was for Choma to be detained at the police station to be locked up. Her phone was taken from her and she was thrown right into a holding cell, one which she described as dilapidated, mosquito infested and unfit for human inhabitation. She said that the roof of the cell was leaking and that it rained for the most part of that night so she could neither lie down nor even sit as the whole floor of the cell was flooded in water. So she had to stand all through the night and remember, she is pregnant. So she stood all night in the cell, her legs buried in water and her body fisted by mosquitoes. She was the only one occupying the cell and she was pretty petrified. The roof was even leaking because it rained heavily that day. I was basically standing. On <laughs> My legs were inside the water. Mosquitoes. <laughs> it was terrible. At this point, family members were rallying around. Her brother was present at the station and he got her a lawyer. The lawyer tried to talk to the policemen to negotiate bail for Chioma, but the officers in charge responded <laughs> that there was nothing they could do, that the orders <laughs> were from above, were from the inspector general of police himself. The lawyer said he has already talked to them and they said that the order is from the IGP. Now, if you do not know, for those who are not Nigerians, the Inspector General of Police 
is the number one police officer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The IGP heads the entire police force and apparently it was beyond the ambits of the divisional level when the orders were coming from the inspector general. So Choma spent the night in cell praying and hoping fervently for morning to come and when morning came she was brought out of the cell and told that on the orders of these powers that be they have been instructed that she be brought to Abuja the federal capital territory. I can bet that it was at this point that it began dawning on her the enormity of trouble that she is confronted with. She was taken in company of two policemen, one by her right and the other by her left. And she was put on a plane and flown to Abuja. Her husband, never leaving her side, secured his own ticket on the same plane, of course out of pocket, and they all jetted off to Abuja. She was taken straight to the police headquarters in Abuja. This was no small case. You see, Erisco Foods Nigeria Limited had petitioned the police and no, do not get me wrong when I say the police. He did not petition the commissioner of police in the state where the offense was allegedly committed. He petitioned the inspector general of police alleging that an organized criminal syndicate being headed by Choma Okoli had tried faking their products and extorting money from them and after they had failed in their attempt at blackmail and extortion they began the marketing and cyber bullying the brand spreading false narratives that their products were killing people and causing cancer I say criminal of uh, complaint of criminal conspiracy the marketing and the blackmailing of uh, killing uh, of our product killing people with our product against an organized syndicate faking our product after failing to export extort money from us and cyber bullying. The petition alleged that Choma Okoli and her criminal syndicates did that with the sinister objective of shutting down the operations of a Risco Foods Nigeria Limited so as to give advantage to their cohorts and their sponsors who are competitors, manufacturers and importers of substandard products into the country. <laughs> so you can see the dimension that this case was channeled to. It wasn't the case of just a casual social media user giving a hurtful opinion on social media. It was reported that Chioma is the gang leader of a criminal syndicate which tried blackmailing and extorting the company of their money and when they failed in that attempt they then resorted to defaming and demarketing the company so as to give undue advantage to competitors meaning that Choma has been paid by enemies of the company to bring down the company. That was the petition that a Risco Foods Nigeria Limited made to the Inspector General of police. So while being held at the police headquarters in Abuja, Choma's family was running up and down and rallying to get her bail. She was informed that before she can even be heard, before they can even give her a listening ear, she must do five things. Listen. But it's not just writing that apology letter. I will write the apology letter, post it on my page on Facebook, post it on five dailies, as in on five newspapers five different newspapers, post it on five different magazines, then I'm going to give him a bank draft of five billion naira. So why must I leave her? How much will you be suing for? Five billion. Five damage, billion I have naira. credit line of 15 million dollars from two customers and now he's suspended from China. So Choma Okoli was served with two different charges, two different offenses, a criminal case of cyber crime and the civil suit for defamation. Under the criminal case, she was charged under section 24 subsection 1 of the Cyber Crime Act of 2015, which says, a person who knowingly or intentionally sends a message or other matter by means of computer systems or network that is grossly offensive, pornographic, or of an indecent, obscene, or menacing character, or causes any of such message or matter to be sent, which he knows to be false for the purpose of causing annoyance, 
inconvenience, danger, obstruction, insult, injury, criminal intimidation, enmity, hatred, ill will or needless anxiety to another or causes such a message to be sent, commits an offence under this act and is liable on conviction to a fine of not more than 7 million naira or imprisonment for a term not more than 3 years or both. So if you send such a message or you caused it to be sent, maybe through your representative or your staff, you have committed an offence under this act and you are liable upon conviction to 7 million naira, not more than 7 million naira in fine or to an imprisonment of 3 years or both. So it is within the judge's discretion to either give the fine or give the imprisonment or give the boat. I hope you're understanding. Follow me on this. This topic concerns everybody. As long as you have a phone and you use social media, this topic concerns you. You cannot afford to miss the knowledge and the nuggets that will be shared in this video. So that's for the criminal offense under the Cyber Crime Act. Let us look at the civil offense of defamation. Remember, she was sued in two different courts for two different kinds of offenses. Under the other suit, she was charged under section 375 of the criminal code, which says, any person who publishes any defamatory matter is guilty of a misdemeanor and is liable to imprisonment for one year. And any person who publishes any defamatory matter, knowing it to be false, is liable to imprisonment for two years so can you draw the distinction between the two paragraphs the first one says if you publish at all whether you know it to be false or not it doesn't matter you are liable to imprisonment for one year but if you published knowing it to be false you are liable to imprisonment for two years so this is even also a criminal offense and he also sued her under a civil court for damages so the suits were flying and raining. At this point, this case had begun spreading like wildfire and gaining momentum on social media. It caught the attention of the FCCPC, that's the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission. It's a federal government parastatal created to protect consumers in Nigeria. So they had to jump into the matter, they had to intervene, and they managed to secure Choma's release on bail. The commission also issued a summons to Erisco Foods to come before it and explain what exactly is happening. When Chief Eric got wind of the FCCPC's intervention and he heard that Choma was out on bail, oh my god, he was crazy, furious. He petitioned the president, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, petitioned the Ministry of Justice, petitioned the National Security Advisor. Oh gosh, it was raining petitions. He said, I petitioned the president, I petitioned the Minister of Justice, I petitioned the uh, National Security Advisor. I petition to many people because you look at us action we, we discourage more manufacturers in this country. He was ready to bring down fire and brimstone. And even after her temporal release on the 24th of January 2024 at about 6.30 a.m. Early hours of the morning, members of the police once again stormed Choma Okoli's apartment, banging on the door, telling her that the DPO wants to see her. And when she asked, for what reason? Why does the DPO want to see me? They told her that, oh, she had sold hair to somebody, somebody had sold hair to her, so, 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 so it was a hair dispute and the DPO needed to see her. Around 6.30 a.m., there was a bank on our door. I peeped through the window. I didn't see anybody. So I had to open the door slightly. I saw two gentlemen. They said they are from Ajiwe Police Station in Aja. Choma told them that she does not sell hair. She is a businesswoman. She deals in children's clothing. She doesn't sell hair. And they told her, oh, not to worry. Just come out. She told them that she needed to go change her outfit, that she wasn't dressed properly. And then she left the window. She was inside. The door was locked. And then she left them, went inside, and placed a call across to her lawyer. Her lawyer instructed her that upon no condition should she open the door for them. And the police officers stayed lingering hours on end threatening to break down the door. Because they've been telling me they want to break my door. Eh, but since you are not coming out, I think I will allow them to break the door now. I saw a girl. Let them break it. Meanwhile, 
the chairman of Risco Foods Nigeria Limited, in the person of Chief Eric Umofia, has been blowing hot on the media. He said that he had labored and suffered and toiled to build this company even before Choma was born. Suppose he's building my company to close down and the 3,000 people will go. This company was established before Choma was born. Whoever is that Choma, 40 years ago, I was suffering for this company to establish it. And this was a deliberate attempt by Choma to sabotage his efforts and his success. Why must you uh, raise your customer? You see customer? Is that how customer be? Customer of destruction. He said it is over his dead body. He would rather die than sit back and let this case slide. Now because of the rant, we will allow her to close our company down. I rather, I rather close the risk of food down and fight for my reputation, fight for my brand, fight for my good name before I die. And stop her with my, my right, arrogant with my right, I don't no apology for it. And the purpose with my right. I'm going to do the right thing. I don't look for trouble. If you come for trouble, I'm ready for you. When people tried to appeal to his conscience that Choma is heavily pregnant and that the weight of this whole stress, the continued detention, in and out of police stations, being flown from one state to the other, that it could take a toll on her health and her baby. And how would it look if she has to be in prison to deliver a baby? Considering the state of the Nigerian prisons, Chief Eric Mafia had this to say. You are celebrating my company. And the seven years imprisonment, the seven million naira, or how many years imprisonment? That three. Three years. So why must you go? Because you're a pregnant woman. In prison, yeah, there is a space where you can keep child. There's nothing more that there is a, where the uh, not more that yeah. So if you think you can come and uh, 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 bully me to drop my case, I'm not dropping it to I rather die. Die than to allow somebody to tarnish my image, I, I walk 40 years to go. He said that nothing, nothing in this life and certainly none in the next, will ever make him drop this case. Me, that's a very kind person like me, mm -hmm. that do a lot of humanitarian since 35 years. Yes. How can I support to intimidate people? I pay people money in police station okay. to bring them, I pay people's debt I to cause problems, to not to cause problems. How can I be in this time? I rather die. Shoma has now cried out profusely, weeping that she did not tell a lie and that her only offense was daring to speak her mind. I help people that want to leave to leave. If you want to die, I help you to die if you say I wish. I just want to be free. <gasps> <laughs> it's not the type of life I want. <laughs> so this drama between Choma Okoli and the Risk of Foods Nigeria Limited has dragged on, getting the attention of international eyes and media. The world is watching to see the end of this case. Now, this video has gotten long. I do not intend to make it any longer. What this video has succeeded in doing is giving us a holistic picture of the whole story, how it started and where we are. In our next video, oh, very important, information packed, we are gonna delve even deeper. I'm going to be divulging my own opinion as well as what the law says. Will Choma really go to jail for this singular act of a tomato puree review. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you're subscribed and you have your bell notifications turned on because as always, there is so much coming your way. But for now, before we wrap up this video, do let us know what you think about this case so far down in the comment section. Do you see any fault? Do you apportion any blame to Choma? Do you think that there is something that she has done wrong? Are you on the side of the company? Do you believe that the company has a right to defend its brand? Or are you on the side of Choma? Do you believe that a responsible institution will not go about this whole issue the way a Risco Foods Nigeria Limited is going about it 
begin to share your thoughts your opinion your feelings down in the comment section so guys yes we have come to the end of today's video if you're new here you're seeing me for the first time or if you've been watching without subscribing don't forget to hit the subscribe button give this video a big thumbs up drop all your comments down in the comment section and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way don't also forget our master class oh very interesting life-changing impacting do send a mail saying interested to nezamasterclass at gmail.com looking forward to seeing you in class thank you so much guys once again it's me your girl barista neza and this is nezaveil i'll see you guys in my next one for now